It's great to see you again. I actually have had the pleasure of having Alexis as a guest on my podcast. We had a wonderful, wonderful, dynamic and powerful discussion about the miracle of music and the role it plays in bringing joy and helping um, folks who are living with Alzheimer's disease and dementia stay connected to their lives. And uh, there are so many wonderful stories that I'm sure she's going to share with us today. Uh, can I just take a minute to give you a proper introduction? Yes, absolutely. And thank you so much. I'm so happy to be here today. Well, we're very happy to have you. You uh, are a very important part of the dementia world. So I'm glad you were able to come in and share your expertise with everybody. So uh, Alexis is, I'm going to, I'm going to say your credentials, but they're just um, letters and I'm not really sure. I know what CDP is because I happen to be one certified dementia pr um, practitioner. Yep. And then you're also an MT hyphen BC. What does that mean? Yes. That means music therapist board certified. Okay. Awesome. Um, and you've, You've been that for 10 years mm -hmm. and you are the inspiration behind Bridgetown Music Therapy, which you founded in 2017. And you are passionate about serving older adults, especially those living with dementia. And you view using music to make a difference in people's lives as a life calling and absolutely loves that she gets to positively impact older generations through meaningful music engagement. So important. I have personally in my career witnessed so many miraculous transformations because of music, the role music plays in tapping into people's um, long-term memories and Leslie mentioned it, I think, uh, a few minutes ago that, you know, people can seem almost catatonic and they hear music and all of a sudden they just start belting out the words and they come alive. They come alive. I know it is just a fascinating occurrence. So we're going to talk about that with you for the next half hour. And then you wanted to start off doing something. Yes, I, I thought we'd put the power of uh, music to use right away. So I wanted to just walk all the participants through a quick little breathing exercise using music. I'm sure it's been a wonderful day of presentations, but also a long day of sitting. Yeah. So we're just going to take a moment, take a pause and focus on our breathing. So you'll want to get into a comfortable seated position. We want to practice good posture, roll those shoulders back, head up, feet flat on the floor. And if you'd like to close your eyes to focus on your breath more, feel free to do that. But let's take a big deep breath together in through your nose, out through your mouth. Here we go. One, two, three, in. Big deep breath and out. And just before we get farther into it, a little bit of info about how deep breathing affects the body. It gets more oxygen to the brain, which helps all kinds of uh, processes in the body. It helps improve sleep, mental focus, energy levels, lower heart rate, lower blood pressure, help release stress and anxiety, so all kinds of things. And I'm going to sing a, a simple song here called Breathing In, Breathing Out. And it's just a, a prompt to continue that deep breathing on your own. The song will really prompt you so you can do that on your own as I sing, or you can simply close your eyes and relax to the music, or you can sing along with me. It's a simple song. You'll pick up on it easily. Mm -hmm. 
breathing in, breathing out. That's what life is all about. Breathing in, breathing out. That's what life is all about. Let's take a couple more deep breaths together. Deep breath in. And let it out. And let your shoulders drop with that exhale. And really use your diaphragm on this breath to, to control the breath in. Deep breath in. Pause and hold and let it out. Okay, and one more time through the song. Breathing in, breathing out. That's what life is all about. Breathing in, breathing out. That's what life is all about. Oh, that was wonderful. Great oh, idea. Thank you for thank leading Thank you. Me. And I saw you singing along. <laughs> I was mouthing it because I didn't want to uh, interrupt your beautiful voice. So <laughs> that was a great yeah, idea. So hopefully that. everyone's feeling better after that. Well, I can tell you I am. So good, good, good. Re-energized me. Uh, yes. So let's let's dig into our topic of the miracle and magic of music, and tell us the burning question. We're waiting for the burning answer. <laughs> How can music really benefit people living with dementia? What is that? What is that all about? How does it happen? Oh, well, music is seemingly magical because it it activates every area of the brain. So it's it's unique, it's a unique medium in the sense that it can reach parts of the brain that may be unreachable otherwise. Um, whether that's a result of dementia, Parkinson's disease, stroke, whatever the whatever the issue going on physiologically, music can still um, activate parts of the brain that may be deteriorate, deteriorating. Um, it it uh, can trigger neural pathways and neural, new neural connections. Um, it can, if a person has lost the ability to, to speak, they can still sing which is amazing, just as Leslie mentioned. Um, so it, it really is a unique, a unique medium in that way. And because of that, it can affect a person mentally, emotionally, physically, spiritually, in all kinds of ways. I don't know if any of you happen to see the uh, special with Lady Gaga and Tony Bennett. Now, by the time Tony Bennett participated in this Radio City Music Hall special, he was so far into his Alzheimer's disease. He was in the latter stage. And the poor man had no idea what planet he was on, let alone um, he couldn't speak for himself. But we knew and we saw it happen in front of our very own eyes on a 60 Minutes interview that he retained the lyrics to every single one of his songs. And Lady Gaga actually even admitted she was really worried about how yeah. this was going to turn out. And here comes the night and the performance starts and, and the pianist sits down at the piano and starts playing Tony Bennett's songs and Tony Bennett did not miss a single lyric. 
he remembered and knew and sang out every single word to every single one of his songs. And that's what we're talking about with the miracle and magic of music. And just to kind of push rewind for a second, I happened to be watching the 60 Minutes interview and he brought his wife, Susan, along and he mm -hmm. was sitting on the sofa. He was looking around and he just really seemed to be confused about where he was and he was being asked questions. He couldn't answer one question that he was being asked and his wife was doing all the talking for him. But they brought his pianist along and and that guy sat down at the grand piano that was on the floor and started playing some of his music. And Tony Bennett jumped off that sofa, went down to the piano and just started belting out every word to every song. I have seen this so many times in my career. Uh, I can think of a, a man who hadn't spoken a word for over a year. And as mm -hmm. soon as he started listening to the song Old Lang Syne, he started uh -huh. belting out the words because he was a Vietnam vet. And it yeah. meant something to him. Yes. And then he started talking after that. So I'm sure you can share lots of stories like that for us and just really hit home why music is such an integral part of the lives of people with dementia. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and Tony Bennett's experience is remarkable, but it's also a, a prime example. It's a classic example of how music affects someone. And um, music resonates differently with everyone. It's a very personal thing, um, but music impacts and affects everyone in some way or another because music is all around us. Rhythm is so uh, innate in us. Um, it could be songs from childhood, songs from the teen years, songs from uh, early in in a marriage or a wedding song or or whatever. It can it's uh, closely tied to memories. It triggers memories, and I yeah I definitely have all kinds of experiences as a music therapist serving older adults, um, living, many of them living with dementia, I would say the most prominent one and one of my, my most favorite experiences as a music therapist is when the, the speech and language, the communication skills just really have deteriorated. They're not really there anymore. Um, or it's, it's just kind of jumbled words coming out, but then they start singing and it's perfectly clear because the lyrics are there triggered by the music um, and so helping helping a person find their voice again that's something music therapy can do um, helping them to uh, self-express to express their emotions through music all kinds of things uh, to get their body moving um, yeah, it's it's a really special, wonderful thing for sure. Is that why you started um, Bridgetown Music Therapy? You just have such a passion. You seem to have such a passion for it. And and I'm hearing what you're saying that just every time you witness these these um, miraculous situations, it must just bring you so much joy. You can't wait to, to get to the next one. <laughs> Absolutely. I definitely started Bridgetown Music Therapy with the the mission and purpose to use music to make a difference in people's lives. Um, music has impacted me personally very powerfully. It helped me gain confidence and find my voice and get through. It's helped me get through difficult times in life. I um, just going back a little ways in my my background. Um, I've always loved music. I grew up in a family where we all learned instruments and we would play together and all of that. So I knew I wanted to do something that involved uh, music. I've always been um, I've always been a helper. I'm a helper at heart. So I I knew I wanted to do something that involved helping people. So I thought, oh, maybe I'll go the route of 
counseling or psychology. But then I was like, wait, I want to do something that involves music. So in high school, I learned about music therapy and it just, it clicked. It grabbed my attention immediately. And I pretty much knew like that sounds exactly like what I want to pursue. Um, so it was a pretty clear path to take. And then it was just a matter of um, finding out how to become a music therapist and, and take those steps. And then to add to that, my, um, my grandmother had Alzheimer's disease and she passed away when I was 16. Um, and so she's really the inspiration for me in many ways to serve people living with dementia and just seeing um, how much she loved music and how she was impacted by it. Um, it just makes sense to put those two things together, music and dementia. Well, that's a beautiful story. <laughs> Thank you for sharing that. Of course. Um, so kind of back to implementing this into the world of people living with Alzheimer's and dementia. How can busy caregivers and or activity professionals incorporate meaningful, and I'm going to emphasize that word, meaningful, music engagement into care and enrichment programming? Well, that is a really great, great question. And it is difficult for caregivers um, to even know where to start, especially if you're, you, you don't consider yourself a musician, you're, you're busy and overwhelmed as it is. You don't want to think about adding something else to the day to day of caregiving. But it's, it's kind of the other way around. Music can really help relieve the stresses of caregiving. It can really help you connect with your loved one. So there are a few simple things you can do to get started. And um, with, with any of this, um, incorporating music into um, caregiving, you'll need to do some digging. You'll, you'll want to ask your loved one or the, your care recipient questions about what kind of music they prefer because you you don't want to just be random about it. You want to be intentional and that's the meaningful piece is uh, you want to be intentional about having it be meaningful to them. And that's not to say that you can't introduce new or different types of genres, styles of music. Um, but I would say try to start with some familiar tunes to them. Um, so uh, I do want to mention really quickly, I, I've written a blog article called Seven Ways to Use Music at Home with Your Loved One, and it just lists out seven different ways. I'll mention a few of those. So first off, singing. It's the simplest thing because we all have a built-in instrument, and that's our voice. You don't need anything you don't need to grab anything you just you have your voice with you and um even if you're even if you're not very confident about your singing voice like i would say just do it like the only way to get more comfortable is to just do it so again find find those familiar songs and just turn it on in the background to start or turn it on um uh during a transition to i know a caregiver in particular I'm thinking of, she had a specific shower song <laughs> for her for her and her loved song to help with the transition to um, giving her a shower and um, create a playlist, a, a go-to playlist that you can turn on. Uh, moving to music. Get your body moving. It could be a seated movement where you're stretch doing some stretches, modeling uh, stretches and movements for your loved one to music. Uh, leverage the power of music to motivate um, yourself and, and your person to move. move uh, music is a natural motivator. Um, dance to music. So a lot of times that just happens naturally. We just start moving our body <laughs> to the music. Um, sometimes it happens more naturally than other times, but it is a wonderful motivator for physical movement, especially if that's a specific goal you're working on with your with your care recipient. Um, 
instrument play, improvisation, songwriting. There's there's all kinds of different uh, music based activities that um, that can be done and that can help support your loved one, um, help bring a different element, a different level to the caregiving and the just the day to day in ins and outs of caregiving. Terrific. And we've already discussed this earlier on in uh, the summit today, how important, I think Dr. Kennedy was talking about, we were talking about this with Dr. Kennedy, um, how important movement and exercise is. So you really have an opportunity to accomplish a couple things here that are just, you know, healthy and stimulating. And we all need that, especially when when we are living with dementia. And we just like Alexa said, when we're hearing music, we just naturally want to move to it. So gosh, there's so many benefits. Alexis, um, what is your focus or mission today with Bridgetown? <laughs> well, it's changed since I originally started it. I um, originally was a traveling music therapist. I would travel around to all my clients, um, care communities, group homes, individuals living at home. And then uh, COVID really shifted that. I, I wasn't able to do that during COVID. And so I really shifted my focus to providing music engagement, meaningful music engagement um, through an online platform. So um, there, there are only 10,000 music therapists in the US. There aren't enough of us to go around to serve all of the needs. And it can also be very cost prohibitive. So um, with that, I wanted to create um, an, an alternative option and something that's more accessible, more affordable to people. So I um, ultimately, I, I teamed up with my husband, who is a professional videographer, and we began creating uh, pre-recorded sessions. So I essentially took my years of experience as a music therapist and, and put it into video format. So all the way down to how I interact with the camera. And as Leslie mentioned, very, really uh, keeping it simple and, and slower paced. So it's very dementia friendly. And um, so we built up a whole uh, member library. It's, it's a subscription model. So when um, when a person signs up, they get full access to our our member library of over 300 videos we've built up um, and it's on demand. It's accessible 24 seven and it's very, very low cost. It's a great option to access at home for a, a life enriching activity for your your loved one. Oh, that sounds amazing. Definitely look into that. You are offering a very generous gift today too for our attendees. You wanna tell us about that? Cause we're just about out of time here, but we have to include that. Tell us oh. what that is and how they can, um, what your your website address is so people can follow up and, and access your program. I can't believe how fast the time went. <laughs> I know, the, the whole day has gone by like that. <laughs> Yes, so we have a couple of free options. Um, we have a free sample session that lives on our website and that is available at the link, I believe. Um, our website is bridgetownmt.com. I'll uh, put that in the chat really quick. And that's really our hub for everything uh, that goes on at Bridgetown. You can find our program options there. Um, and then we also have a free live session we do monthly um, and that so that goes that's ongoing and you can sign up for that at our website and we'd love to have you join we have it's open to anyone we have all kinds of individuals and communities um, all over the country join us for that and it's been hugely popular we have a lot of regular attendees. 
Um, we do a different theme every month and it's just a, a time of music engagement and we incorporate an aspect of lifelong learning into it as well. Awesome. That's exciting. <laughs> well, you a lot of fun. a wonderful thing here. Just keep it, keep it going. Keep that momentum going because it's so valuable and, and brings so much um, pleasure and joy and high quality of living for people with dementia. So thanks again for being here, Alexis. It was wonderful to chat with you again. And um, hopefully we will have an opportunity to work together again in the near future. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Lisa. And I, uh, we just want to say we really appreciate you putting all of this together, the Minding Dementia Summit. It's been wonderful. Thanks. Thanks. Um, all right. Thank you.